These two devices are called bungs and you can use them to seal heating systems off. Never have gate valves and cold feed supplies to boilers. If they get shut off, the boiler can become dangerous, it can overheat. I'm using it because it's in the loft here. The bungs go inside the cold feed and over the ventilation pipe, expansion pipe like so. Clean the end a bit with my fingers and the bung goes over it. This stops gravitation and circulation of air, preventing leakage. Also, if you look at this feed and expansion system, look at the brown water. It's pumping over and it's oxidizing. From this, I can tell that the vent pipe needs to be raised. <clears throat> Just chasing the plasterboard out so I can get the pipes in the wall to hide it and the skirting will go on. So just a bit of a tip for you, never put plasterboard or plaster touching the floor because the damp will rise and it will rot and it will make the, the plaster come off, paint will peel off. So always leave a couple of inch gap. Here it's really bad work we've done. Here microball is chased in the wall, it's clipped back to the wall, covered in tape to prevent corrosion. At the top, I put a metal plate. That's because it's within the five centimeters of the building regs to protect it against plasterboard nails. Here we've got a compression fitting, microboard to 15 mil pipe compression. You put the nut on, the outer olive, the inner olive. These can be quite challenging, so I sometimes put a small amount of PTFE on. Trick here for when you're soldering next to wood. Use some plasterboard, half inch thick. Clean the joint. Flux it, only flux where you want the solder to run. Always wipe excessive flux. At the bottom there, I've used mole grips to secure it. Capped off an old cold water supply. Whenever you cap off, always do it within two diameters of the pipe. This prevents Legionella. So this is the old supply underneath the kitchen sink. Pressure reducing valve, isolation valve on the MDP pipe. Very unprofessional, needs securing. So get in there, right. This is going behind the kitchen cupboard, so I put it all tight to look nice and professional because they're spending a lot of money on this kitchen. So I've told them to fill that up with some expandable foam. That's the outside tap, I've wrote on it. Coal main in. Coal to the house. Unvented hot water supplied back and these supplies that are already there they're going to go underneath that piece of wood and connect onto it now then those plastic pipes have no inserts in so you've always got to explain things to the customers um, knowledge is trust knowledge is professionalism no inserts in the pipe that means their insurance would have been invalid Sooner or later, it would have leaked because the plastic pipe would have been brittle. Um, and this old hep hepto pipe, it is barrier pipe, so at least it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, pretty naughty that. So the customer has gone to screw fix to go and get some new components. Sunday call out for friends. This guy's given me a lot of advice over the years, so 24-7 for him. He's a righteous man. Here we go. The electrical boiler, they're not very efficient. Um, I'm gonna put it down to the pump setting, the bypass setting, um, and maybe the NTC as well. So I've increased the bypass. So I've lowered the bypass. So if it only gets to say, uh, zero two, it will open up. Circulate round, it's copper heat exchanger, so you don't want it scaling up. That might have been faulty, so um, a bit of a, giving it a bit of a clean. So hopefully that's done it. It came up with a temperature flow issue. I checked the resistance on the NTC, that came back okay. 
Pin thrust pump. So even though it's not gas, it's still got an interface you can go through. So the boiler's up and working. I've labeled the isolation for emergencies. I've labeled down here as well. Nest power supply, cylinder for the immersion. I wrote on there. And that's the cylinder thermostat. The boiler. So here we have a leak. I'll show you what I've done next door. I had to take all the boxing up, all the flooring up to access the leak. And it'd been dripping along a cable, leaking through the ceiling um, a meter away from the actual leak. So I've located the leak. So now the strategy I've got is to take the leaking pipe out as a whole, take it outside, refabricate it, and put it back in. Um, but yeah, look at the state of this. So the toilet pan was secured leveled with cardboard close coupled pan in rigid copper which i don't like plastic pipe or flexible hoses but sometimes it's better for doing maintenance work um it wasn't fully soldered there solder hadn't gone round so i've cut it there i was going to unsweat it but it's too too tight cut it there i'm gonna cut it there thread the pipe out and unsweat that and remake it all together Cut the chipboard out, look, on the joist, so I can go back in. So, I'm gonna loosen that fit in there, pull the pipe out and refabricate it. So just here, I've lathered the solder on. I don't want any risks. I've let it dry out. I'm gonna put this back in. Because I used that piece there and kept the length, the toilet should go back okay. I'm gonna silicon around the base, put some lead over that instead of cardboard. Put some spaces behind because the glued it back looks dreadful. <laughs> 